This is uh, the second recording of the Family Trust. Now, I mentioned the book Creative Visualization by Shakti Gawain, uh, Shakti Gawain on the last recording. Here is a copy of that book. That's a very good book. And if you read that book, and I suggest that you read it three or four times, that you can buy it used on the internet for three or four dollars. You can read it in one day, and you're probably better off if you read it 10 times. But this is a second recording on the family trust. And it's about how to attain wealth. Let me tell you a few things about wealth. Uh, number one, well, there was a man that came to uh, Jesus and he wanted to know what he had to do in order to get it, uh, attain the kingdom of heaven. And uh, Jesus asked him if he followed his commandments. And he said he's been doing that from when he was a child. And then Jesus wanted to know uh, if he would sell everything he had, give it to the poor, and come and follow him. The man didn't want to do that because he was wealthy and he had great wealth. Now, when you talk about great wealth and he didn't want to do that, take a look at what he did not have. He didn't have a television, no matter what size. He didn't have a record player. He didn't have a stereo. He didn't have a piano. He didn't have an automobile. He didn't have indoor plumbing. He didn't have indoor lights. He didn't have so many things. King Solomon didn't have those things. We open our refrigerator and there's food from all over the world and King Solomon didn't have that. I have a recliner that I sat in. King Solomon would have given all kinds of things just to have a chair like that. And King Solomon probably would have gave half his kingdom for a car. And so one of the first steps in achieving wealth, you have to start by acknowledging and understanding that you already have it. Each day I thank God for my telephone. I thank him for my indoor lighting. I thank him for my indoor toilet. I thank him for my indoor water. I thank him for all the food I have to eat. I thank him for all the wonderful things that I have. I have a closet full of stuff I don't even use. And most people have that. And so, first of all, start being thankful for what you have. And once you start being thankful for what you have, and you find out that you are wealthy, then it becomes a lot easier to become even more wealthy. Now, in order to become wealthy, you need balance in your life. Now, if you're married to someone who feel that it's their duty to go shopping every chance they got and spend as much money as they can, it's very difficult to grow your wealth when you have someone like that that you're partnered with. And so uh, that is something that you have to work on to start with. Uh, that book, Creative Visualization, might help. Uh, there's a course they give in Seattle uh, called Pursuit of Excellence uh, by Context Associates. That would do wonders. There's a lot of things that you can do, but you need to change that situation. If you're single and you're looking for someone to spend the rest of your life with, you want to have it as a life of joy, abundance, and love, and not a life sentence. And so the first step is to develop an attitude, a mindset of unconditional love, which means that you're going to love everybody. You're going to love people you don't know. When I get ready to go to the gas station, I'll close my eyes and I'll think about 
uh, all the people at the gas station that I run into, and I'll send love from my heart to those people. When I go to the grocery store, I think about everybody I may run into in the grocery store, working for the grocery store, shopping at the grocery store, and I send love to them. The same with the doctor's office or a restaurant. And when you do that, you'll find everything just starts working better for you. When you don't criticize people that drink alcohol, when you don't criticize people that smoke crack, when you don't criticize people that uh, is doing things that you don't want to do, uh, then people will start feeling that unconditional love. And what happens when people feel unconditional love and they start feeling that you love them, then they'll start thinking they can be themselves around you. And when people start thinking they can be themselves around you, then you get to know who they really are. And you can find out who you are compatible with. Now, you can take an a, a ink pen and a light bulb, and the two of them don't merge together any kind of way. But a cup and a saucer, they sort of support each other's function. And you want someone that's going to support where you are and what you're doing. And don't be in a hurry to get in a relationship because you may not be ready. And when I say you may not be ready, there might be certain things you're looking for in a relationship, but you haven't improved yourself to the point to where now you deserve uh, that type of relationship. So you need to raise your own vibration before you uh, uh, get into a relationship so you can have someone with a high enough vibration to go with you to create all the things that you want to create. Um, now, um, oh, okay, let, let, me, let me also say that Learn to give. Never say that you can't afford to give something. Remember your words are power. When you say you can't afford, it's just like God saying, let there be light. There's power and it creates. When you say you can't afford, you're giving those words power and you're creating. Now there's some things you can make a choice. There's some things you want to give to and some things you don't want to give to. And if there's something that you don't want to give to, don't give to it. And pick the things that you want to give to. Remember, charity starts at home. When you say things like, oh, I'm broke, or I can't afford this, or I can't pay that, those words have power. And so make sure that when you're speaking power into your life, you're speaking things that are going to help you move ahead and help you grow. Now, when I spoke of uh, charity... And charity starts at home. What I would like to see you do is get your family together from mother and father, grandmother, grandfather, uh, children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews. Get them all together. Get them to sign a contract that once they reach whatever age you want to put in there, 25 or 30, that they start sending $10 a month to the oldest person in the family. And that oldest person in the family can do anything they want to with that money. Now, if you send money to uh, some of these charities, like uh, UNICEF, uh, them people, the person run it, paying themselves almost a million dollars a year and the charity pays for Rolls Royce for that person. And so only thing I'm saying is that if you're paying to the oldest person in your family, you know what that person is spending money on and it's not a Rolls Royce. And if the oldest person in your family reach the point to where they can buy a Rolls Royce, 
and they are making a million dollars a month, send them $10 anyway. Be on their good side. Maybe they'll leave something to you when they die. And if you have someone in the family that reached the age of donation and they're not donating anything, then when they become the oldest person in the family, they don't get anything. Just the ones that donate to that to, to what you're doing. That starts you to giving, for one thing, and that starts you to giving uh, uh, to someone in your family, someone in your bloodline. And that will start to help bring the family together. And so you can write up a contract so that you can have certain rules and stipulations on how this would work. But... Give the oldest person in your family $10 a month. Let them spend it any way they want to. And when you become the oldest person in your family, you receive $10 a month. And this giving will help you move toward wealth or greater wealth a lot more than you know, a lot more than you think. Uh, I will make another recording uh, in another week or two. But that's all for now.